know, for, for boxing. All right, man. Big shout out to Gil Cole, one of my subscribers. Um, my partners on YouTube always give me a hard time. You know what I'm saying? We, we chop it up in the chat um, on, on a regular basis with other, on other channels and such. But anyway, uh, Gil Cole just made a comment on one of my videos saying that if a fighter wants to prove himself, he needs to, he'd have to go through Sean Porter. Um, and then he said, oh my, like something like, oh my, did I just call Sean Porter a gatekeeper? And you know, the reality is that at this stage, Sean Porter, he, he's still he's still a contender. He's working with his way up to being a top tier contender uh, once again. Um, and it basically was off the performance off a losing performance, he gave uh, a good account of himself versus Errol, and then of course he got that win over Formella. I'm not sure how Formella, Formella catapults Sean Porter right back into title contention, but somehow it does. I guess it was just, let's get you back in the win column and then let's get you a title shot, which is fair enough. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got guys getting title shots off of uh, losses, Abney Yildrum, and um, you know, such. So um, for me, is Sean Porter a gatekeeper? In a way, yes. But at the same time, he's only like one fight away from potentially being a champion again or potentially being a title challenger. So the term gatekeeper for a lot of people is, is kind of looked at like, oh, that's insulting. But in reality, a guy doesn't have to remain a gatekeeper. That's just like Danny Garcia. I think at this point, Danny Garcia is a gatekeeper. But all it takes to... Um, catapult a guy from gatekeeper status is to be a high level prospect or a high level guy moving up the rank trying to get to contendership so if you look at a guy like Boots Ennis or Virgil Ortiz if, if one of those guys were to fight a Danny Garcia or a Sean Porter or even say an Adrian Broner and they lose not only does that loss halt their progress I feel like a win for that other guy proves him to be not just some guy that's holding the line, but a guy that's maybe better, has a, a more left than what people think he has. And I'll give an example. When um, Andre Berto and Sean Porter fought, at that point, Andre Berto was on, his, on, on the decline and pretty much considered to be, you know, on his way out in, in terms of being an elite level or in terms of being a top level welterweight. But had Berto been able to beat Sean Porter, we'd be talking about Andre Berto at, immediately after that as a guy worthy of a title shot. Because I don't think Porter was a champion at the time they fought. No, I'm pretty sure. I know Porter wasn't a champion at the time they fought. So when you think about it in those terms, a gatekeeper it's not a permanent status or it's not a status that it means that you own you you have to from that point on continue to go down um you know of course when guys like uh Shane Mosley reached gatekeeper status they didn't win the fights that they needed to win to propel themselves back into contendership and back to the top level so he continued to drop down to where he just became like a stepping stone for guys who wanted to get a name on their resume um, over a guy that was pretty much a has-been, um, a guy who was on his way to retirement. So, you know, it, it's all up for, it's all about your perspective on it, but at the same time, there is, to me, there is some science to it, I guess, for lack of a better term. But that's all I got to say on the subject. D-Lo 404 Boxing, I'm